Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start to round 201. We'll give some time for people to hop in uh, while we're going through some of the introductions. Um, so, of course, thank you guys. Uh, we're going to do this presentation. Uh, effectively manage employees and improve efficiency using technology. Uh, we're really excited to uh, present this webinar for you guys. We have some really good to speak with you guys. So, my name is Hosam. Um, product marketing manager for WorkWave. We have Joyce Harris, who's the product owner for WorkWave Service, and Brian Farrell, who's our resident product field service expert. Hey guys. Um, so before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Uh, we've allocated time at the end of the webinar for live Q&A. So if you have questions, um, you could either put them through the chat or you can go ahead and uh, put them through as we're presenting or wait till the end, it's up to you. Um, so definitely take an opportunity to ask questions throughout the process. We'll be able to answer them. Uh, we have people waiting, uh, ready to field your questions, either through a chat, um, and they can also send us the questions. We can answer them as we go through them. Um, so don't forget to do that, of course. Um, if you have any technical difficulties or want to reach out to any one of us for any reason, please, again, the chat box is there for uh, all those things. Go ahead and uh, move through the presentation now. All right, it's the meat and potatoes. So here's the agenda. We're gonna go over the essential metrics that drive better decision-making. Um, I'm gonna show you how we double productivity um, using scheduling software um, and how kind of scheduling the, your employees throughout the day can kind of help you improve that productivity. Systems to track timesheets in field mobile apps that increase leads and uh, convert opportunities additional features um, and stuff that's coming soon. And then we're gonna do like a live Q&A at the end. Uh, hopefully we have enough time to get through all this. All right, so we got a poll question for everybody. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop up this question for you. There's, a, there's three questions. Uh, once everybody goes ahead and participates, we'll share the results and we'll continue on. Seventy-five percent. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. So it looks like we got a lot of people who are paying their employees commission. That's like seven percent. That's pretty good. Um, and that's that's one of the main reasons why we wanted to put this together because we know that this can get really difficult, complicated. There's a lot of nuance to this. Um, so we want to put this together for you guys. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, so a better decision making with real-time metrics. So uh, we know that day-to-day, -day, the data that you guys use to kind of help you make decisions throughout your day is it's vital for you, um, especially in a small business um, at, and as you're continuing to grow. So we put together some of these uh, key topics and I got Brian here who's going to kind of help direct me because uh, he's got his nose to the grindstone he's talking to a lot of field service businesses, and he kind of understands a lot of the issues that you're having. He also comes from a background in the field service industry. So it's really great to have him on this uh, call with us. So we want to da navigate better with actual dashboard. So um, the system kind of helps give you guys this 20,000 foot view of a uh, picture when you come in in the morning and you kind of see everything and you kind of make decisions on strategically, where do you want to place your team? Uh, what, type, what type of opportunities you want to capitalize on uh, and how we're going to improve that productivity for the day. It's all laid out there for you. Of course, getting paid faster, increasing your sales is very important. Um, so these are some of the metrics that will help you, so, you know, keep you in line and making sure that you know where you want to spend a lot of your time. Do you want to go after this opportunity that's pending or do you want to go ahead and collect this, uh, this payment from somebody who's done it? You know, page yet it's it's been overdue for a certain period of time. Um, so Brian, this is where we would kind of need your expertise. Um, obviously, you talk to you're you're talking to uh, different field service uh, managers throughout the day. How how are they using this? Is this something that that they're really looking for and they're benefiting from? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, the, the great thing about the dashboard is it, it, it kind of embodies, you know, the essence of why a, a business of, of any size for that matter is going to come to a solution like WorkRave Service, for example, that we're using here, right? Um, maybe you're on, you know, all kind of manual or paper, paper methods or you're using kind of a homebrew uh, mix of things. The issue there is while it, it works and it gets your job done, it's not scalable, right? So as the kind of little call outs that are on this, this picture that we have here, get paid faster, right? All, all that it is, is telling you, hey, who, who owes me money, right? Who do I gotta go collect money from? And it's gonna not just tell you who they are and give you a call to action. We also have um, you know, automated communications to those people. So you can have the peace of mind that not only do you know who they are, but you know that they're being communicated to. And at the end of the day, when you're up to your eyeballs and it's, you're rocking and rolling, that's what happens, right? Everybody's been there, you slip through the cracks and ultimately maybe you get your, your money from your customers, but that's, that's you know, holding up your, your cash flow. Um, you know, the kind of mantra here at WorkWave is, you know, to simplify it, it's you wanna grow your business, you wanna service your customers and you wanna maximize your money. And that quite literally is what the dashboard does. It calls out each of those three bullet points in different capacities as far as how do I grow my business, what's happening during the day. Um, so some really cool insights into, you know, your, your teams or your individual technicians completing the jobs. Are they on time? Or are they ahead of time, right? Um, if you don't have this kind of technology in place, you don't know that until it's the end of the day. You know, the event has already happened and we're already three hours behind schedule. Um, you know, and it just gives you that foresight to look towards the end of the schedule and make some arrangements. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, automation is probably the best way that that I think is what the big the big takeaway here is. It's peace of mind that if if we're running our, system, our, our business through and we're updating things the way we should, the software's got your back and isn't gonna let things slip through the cracks. What, what would you say, Brian, the most used metric is, because when I talk to a lot of business owners, it's, it's usually getting paid, you know, getting that, getting that cash with the business. Is that what you're also hearing? Yeah, absolutely, right? Um, you know, I guess <clears throat> it, it's an interesting question because I guess it would depend on, you know, what, what profile or what user in the company you're speaking to, right? So if if you're talking to the owner of the business, absolutely, that top bar of, you know, where can I go sell and, um, excuse me, where can I convert a lead into an opportunity or an opportunity into a job? And then obviously, who owes me money, right? At the end of the day, that's, that's let's, let's not kid ourselves. That's what we're all here for is to make some money, right? Um, if you are a office manager or the operations person, right, it's kind of more of that middle screen, right? Where it's, as I was referencing the flow of the day, are we on time? Are we ahead of schedule? Um, and then we even give you some great insight into, you know, if you're using some technology, some of our technologies to, you know, solicit requests um, for reviews to your, um, to your Google My Business page to boost your, your digital footprint, which is, you know, paramount. Um, in this day and age, uh, in addition to our online booking feed. So, you know, it, it, it's truly, again, those three bullets of, of, you know, growing your business, which is, you know, your leads coming in, your opportunities, the reviews, you know, going out to potential new customers, um, maximizing your money, which is all the invoicing stuff, um, and servicing your customers, which is, you know, are we on time? Are we ahead of schedule? Can I fit more people? Do I need to reschedule? Um, again, you can be a, you know, 30 truck operation that have individuals that do each one of those things. You could be a one man band who just needs something to look at while you're choking down a sandwich and returning phone calls on the side of the road. Um, that's the beauty of it. Simplicity takes a whole bunch of data and narrows it down into a view that's consumable by anybody. Excellent. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, we want to start with this. Um, we want to start it because this is really where you, you kind of get in the morning, you start your day, you kind of see what you got going on, um, and, and you can develop a strategy from there. Um, and we know that this will kind of help you kind of stay on task. You take care of the important things, and then you can delegate uh, from there. So uh, we found that we're extremely important. That's why we want to start there. Um, and that leads us into the next piece. Now you, you kind of know what you want to do. 
you have an idea of what the day is going to look like. Now we got to make sure we can execute, and that's why we have this route optimization tool. Uh, so that's going to kind of help you organize your day to day um, and taking a, a lot of different data to kind of make sure that it flows correctly. Um, so you can quickly and easily rearrange employees. So again, you get all that data. Now you're going to maybe make some adjustments, right? You're going to evaluate the distances between jobs. Maybe somebody calls in and cancels. Uh, maybe it's raining for the day and you got to move a couple things or it's going to rain in the morning and the afternoon. So this is a really great way to kind of create that efficiency uh, across the board. And you can kind of double, well, we say double because we have case studies that show a doubling of that workforce productivity. Um, and then again, of course, you're going to be able to create job commitments. So maybe somebody will call and say, hey, listen, um, I need this time. I can't make any other time. And then you can actually send them a message. Um, it's automated. They can confirm that appointment so that it'll route everybody around that time. Uh, and then, of course, you might have your service hours where we want to keep everybody uh, within those times. So we, we, we keep track of overtime and things like that. Um, so some of these things, go ahead, Brian. Some of these things are really important because uh, we're also trying to keep costs at a certain uh, certain level. Uh, absolutely, you know, and and <clears throat> you know, starting again, it, it, the the common thread here is the automation, right? Um, with the service reminders, so you can have peace of mind that not only is it going to remind your customers, but um, the beauty here is, you know, what's kind of getting called out on this screen is, you know, think of the last time you got your hair cut, you went to the dentist. Um, those two are the coming that that are coming top of mind and you get that text message right the day before this has that same functionality. And not only is it cool, but it's almost like, a, you know, if you really think about it. Those are things that everybody in everyday life is expecting. So it's almost like you need to have this kind of technology because your customers are expecting it. And then what it does for you on the other side, from a best practice, you know, send those conf confirmation alerts out, you know, a day or two before. And not only are you going to have, it's not just, okay, we know they're going to be there. It's, oh, they can't be there. Let me call them now, rearrange them, and now get some somebody else in their spot that's waiting or just some new opportunity. So, you know, the idea there is obviously customer satisfaction and then also, you know, the back and forth for your guys out in the field or your teams out in the field, you know, they're not pulling up to a house and ringing the doorbell and calling you and calling the customer and waiting for a text message. And all of a sudden you burn 35 minutes just to find out that they're not there. Um, and then what you started with here, I mean, the optimization, you know, I mean, let's, Let's call it like it is like a lot of these softwares kind of all look the same. They all kind of say the same things and they all say optimization and, and like this is actual optimization. It's not sequencing. Right. So a lot of the other a lot of the other platforms will use sequencing. Well, they'll just use this. And this is actually an intelligent piece of technology an algorithm in the background that understands a whole bunch of rules. And to what Hosam said, when you have a very heavy, you know, routing based business that feature in of itself like i mean if you're just looking from a dollars and cents standpoint you are ahead of the game on the spend for the software by like three four x like it, it it's completely game changing um so it's it's just all very very crucial pieces um that you need again just to you know to the to the point of this meeting Make sure everybody's just, you know, being efficient out in the field. I was out in the field myself for many years. And I got to tell you, like, as seemingly, you know, it, it seems like somebody would want to just, like, sit on the side of the road waiting for a phone call to go to your next job for 10, 20 minutes in between each job. Like, that, that honestly gets old. It keeps, it keeps your employees engaged. They feel like they're being productive. Um, and honestly, there's all sorts of studies on it that'll show they, they will, you will have a longer, you'll have lower uh, turnover, excuse me, um, when you have a technician or a team leader that is constantly being productive and constantly being busy um, and feeling you know like they have work to do every single day. Excellent. Uh, we actually got a question in here. What are some of the constraints or rules that I can use for optimization? Um, and then it's, uh, what about my employee vacations? Can it tech optimize their route slash day themselves, things like that. So, uh, 
you know, Brian or even Joyce, if anyone uh, wants to chime in, but yeah, so really just the, seems like the question is more about the constraints and how we can develop or, or the advanced options for the route op that we think this question is more geared towards. Yeah, I mean, I could, I could take the, as far as the restraints, um, you know, it's, it's where you start and finish for the day for that specific route, right, which can actually be unique. The hours of operation of, you know, in which this is, this is the range that we, we want to work in. Are we leaving from the shop or are we trying to get to the first job at this time of day? Obviously, the physical location of each job, the driving distance between them. Um, historical traffic patterns um and if you want to there's even some additional ones and joyce can can fill in if i miss any you know if there's a maximum number of jobs if there's a maximum you know driving distance um and you can keep that you know envision you have one two three four routes you can keep that individual so brian hosam and joyce their jobs gets just get routed that's there, or it can think side to side. So maybe some of Joyce's job makes make more sense on my job, on my on my route. Joyce, did I miss anything there? Keep no, that was good. That was good. And then I was just going to answer the second part of the question about um, employee PTO. So we do have you have the ability to put time off for specific technicians on specific days, and if an employee is not available, whether it be for the full day or even if it's just for a few hours throughout the day, the route optimization takes that into consideration and it will not book over that unavailable time. So that's also another thing I just wanted to note based on the questions. Thanks, guys. Good questions. All right, so next we're gonna go into um, improving productivity continue, which in the timesheets uh, is a central part of your uh, profitability here. So if we want to give the employees the ability to lock time, um, you know, obviously, you know, if you're doing it through paper, this can get a little bit cumbersome and messy and things get lost and people forget. Um, this is just a digitized way that you can kind of have that timesheet available for everybody. And then uh, at the same time, designate a team lead or a person um, to go ahead and manage those times in the field, maybe clock everyone in, and then you can send that out for approval. Um, and of course, we're going to be taking into consideration breaks, time out, and time off. Uh, so it's going to be able to keep track of all those things, and then you can pull a report and then uh, send that out to perhaps a payroll company or a bookkeeper or something like that. Uh, Brian, do you end up seeing a lot of people uh, doing that with their payroll? They're, they're kind of getting that information and sending it out. What, what is the most used way for this? Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of a lot of layers to this onion for sure, right? Um, some people are charging by time, right? So that, that's that's a crucial thing, the timing in and out, being able to do that from the field, having the um, audit ability from, you know, the website or the administrative side, um, you know, and some other people just, you know, really want to track their time. So it's, you know, it, the more data you give it, the more detail you'll get out, right? Like good, good information in, you're going to get good information out of it. So from, you know, drive time through, you know, starting and stopping of each individual job, starting and stopping for the entire day, all that's going to be captured. Um, also on the flip side, it, it even has a nice little auditing system, um, or excuse me, history to it to kind of, you know, keep everybody honest of any changes that were made to it. So again, if you're, if you're doing a lot of like, you know, punch clocks um, and that sort of thing, or everybody's writing down, their hours, this this just automates that, you know, that magic word again. Um, and then it also, you know, this all this time capturing also rolls into the, you know, the efficiency side of the business where, you know, do we want to run reports on how long we took for service A, because service A we normally schedule for one hour. Maybe over this past year we've been banging out in 45 minutes. You know what? Shorten that up, free up more time on your calendar. And you're going to make more money. So, a lot of a lot of great uses here for sure. But again, it's it it just comes back to the automation of it. If you're if you're big on tracking the time, um, and then ex, you know want to push that over uh, to whatever your payroll is, um, it's you know it's crucial for sure. Do people find that they're using this also to to kind of help them keep track of the hours so that there may be. Maybe they'll schedule someone who has less hours, so they're not getting over the 40 hours and, and getting a lot of overtime hours when they could potentially pop somebody in 
Um, so are, is that happening a lot? Or you see that a lot? Yeah, yeah. Again, it's all it's all case by case, but but for sure, if if you if you need to, um, you know, if you want to monitor that way, make sure whether it's not to pay overtime or just make sure everybody's getting a fair shake kind of deal. Mm. All that reporting will be there for you. Um, and it even takes it a step further, you know, maybe you're not into payroll software yet, right? You're just, you know, Miho, Sam, and Joyce just started a business, you know, we're just gonna, we need something to track some time. And we can also denote how much Hosam gets paid versus Joyce gets paid versus I get paid. And it'll break out those reports for you too. So depending on kind of how far along you are as a business, um, it, it can honestly meet a lot of your, you know, payroll you know, needs. So, yeah, for sure. Excellent. Yeah, I, I know that's been a point of contention with a lot of people in the home service industry. You know, labor is a big cost. Um, and we always try to do our best to kind of make sure we're, we're keeping that consideration, doing that for its consideration. Um, next piece here we want to get into is the managing the jobs now. Um, so, scheduling and assigning the jobs, quickly converting leads into opportunities, which is, uh, you know, a vital part of any you know, successful, thriving business. We want to take those leads that we're getting in front of and then moving them through uh, the CRM process and getting them and turning them into an opportunity and converting them into actual jobs. Uh, so uh, the system is going to kind of help you kind of direct um, each potential client through that process. Um, you know, of course, we're going to be out there, we're going to be meeting uh, new customers, potential customers. We want to be quickly and effortlessly create estimates. Um, and the way it's designed to make everything nice and streamlined is that drag and drop technology. So you, you kind of have everything in front of you um, and then you can just quickly and easily slide it over to where you want it to go on the schedule and then it's done. You know, um, you know we design these softwares to make your lives a little bit easier. We try not to make it so that uh, things are more difficult. So that's why we take into account and we meet with a lot of our, our customers to kind of make sure that we know uh, what is the most efficient way, the most streamlined way to, to present the information. Um, so these are some of the things that are, have helped. I know Brian had a message to me, a story about a customer who's using these estimates uh, while he was uh, sending them out, uh, where he was sending them out via email or, or printing them out and bringing them with them on a sales call. So, so they had like a sales team where he'd print out an estimate and kind of uh, make sure they brought it out with there with them so they can actually collect the signature. So, uh, in your experience, Brian, what, you know, in your, your previous uh, field service experience, where, what would you say um, the estimate process, where is that kind of fault? Is it something that's very difficult that you used to run into and it gets a little messy? What's mixing in with your job flow? Yeah, no, for sure. And, and, you know, it's, you know, estimates are, are huge. Right. And again, it's, it's the automation of, you know, all the little components that make up running the business day to day. So when it comes to estimates, you know, it's just, if you have a three, three carbon copy, white, yellow, and pink slip that, that most people do initially, um, those are great when you're by yourself, but you know, it starts getting passed around, um, as you grow a little more and, you know, it can get lost or it just becomes a little more cumbersome. Um, and even just uh, the simple fact of dra drafting up the estimate, right, becomes a little bit of a contention where, <laughs> as silly as it sounds, it's not that you don't trust not you to do it. If it was one of your, your people out in the field, it's just, you're not sure they're gonna really present it in the right way, right? So um, when you have that process accessible at your fingertips, wherever you are out in the field, um, not only does it just connect the dots and keep everything very organized and keep the reminders up for you, um, but you, you have the peace of mind that your, your representation of your estimate is going to be, you know, very, very consistent across the board. It's going to be the same exact looking thing, exactly how you want it, which is tremendous, right? And then, you know, the single function of you win it right there, you could get it, uh, you know, scheduled with the customer instead of doing the whole, all right, I'll get back to the office, I'll give you a call and a day or two goes by, right? So getting that job on the books quicker, which is just going to lead to money in your pocket faster. Excellent. Um, I actually had a question come through that I thought was pretty good. So uh, producing an estimate on the mobile app would that be, uh, would be helpful. So uh, I think 
But what some people really want to try to do is maybe, I know the mobile app that we have is a native mobile app where it's kind of designed for kind of here's your schedule, here's where you need to go, step-by-step -step instructions. Um, but there are people that are using like an iPad, you know, you know, where they kind of all have the estimate on third-party device or they can see the whole software and they can get the same shoes. Um, do you recommend doing it that way? Do you feel like that way is a little bit more efficient? I mean, I got to be honest, I recommend whether you're going to, you know, you have the profile that is going to be drawing estimates up or you're just executing the jobs to do it on a tablet. It's just a bigger screen. You know, everything we have works perfectly fine on, on the cell phone. But I don't know about you all, but I got big clunky fingers. And, you know, it, it's a great experience. And But, it, again, there's just only so much real estate on the screen. So, mm -hmm. um Yes, tablet, you know, iOS powered tablet or or iPad for that matter. Um, excuse me, Android or iOS powered device being a tablet, excuse me, uh, would work great. And then for those profiles that do need to execute both, that that's why the, the company provisions the licenses the way they do. So you can have, you know, two tabs, you're logged in both sides and you can flip over draw up an estimate for somebody, have them sign off on it. Um, and depending on the roles and permissions that the company sets for that individual, if they aren't just the main administrator, um, will dictate what they can and can't do beyond that. Um, but yeah, for sure. Any, again, even just straight generic mobile usage of here's my stops, I'm just timing in and out of it and I'm not doing anything robust that the mobile app can do. I always suggest to run off um, a bigger screen if possible just because it's it's bigger if for nothing else awesome all right uh so this is the next part of, oh sorry joyce did you have something to add no i was just hopping on okay. <laughs> she's giving uh, me a hook <laughs> so uh, uh next part of the presentation is right, we're out in the field now we're we're, we're getting the jobs done and now um, we're, we're making things a little bit easier for our guys out in the field uh, with our forms. But not only is it digitizing the form process, but it's actually an opportunity. And what we realized after creating this, this part of the, uh, the, the software is that this is actually an opportunity for uh, a business to, it's a credibility piece, it's an opportunity to provide some branding. Um, so it allows you to kind of make these really nice, beautifully designed forms to kind of help you um, present yourself in the best light possible. And it's a great way for, to market yourself, especially if you're leaving something behind. So you're using technology, you have a form that you're filling digitally. It looks really nice and clean and crisp. Um, and these are, you know, uh, customizable. You can kind of format them or configurable, I like to say. Um, you can use them for checklists. You can use them for state forms, which are really important. I know those are uh, vital. You know, you got to make sure that you have all the regulatory forms filled out. Uh, it's a cumbersome process. I know the technicians and the crews hate doing it, but it's 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 part of your business. Um, it's a great way that you don't lose anything and have everything digitized in the system. Um, and it, auto, it automatically syncs them. Uh, we actually have customers that are using uh, the forms where they're creating proposals, where they're going out there with a proposal and they're attaching it to a service and they can go out there um, and they can actually do a presentation of a, of a job and get a signature right out in the field, and that's all digitized and ready to go, and that it's completely seamless uh, when we're moving uh, through the process. Um, this question I had uh, was, was, was really for Joyce. So when you guys were putting together this forms manager, um, I know that we spoke to a few, few businesses, a few different business types or different verticals. What, what would you say some of the more common things uh, that you found where uh, after the first iteration where we found that people were really asking or clamoring for different types of uh, components in the forms, uh, forms yes. manager. Yeah, so I think you hit on a few of them. I think um, checklists and state forms are really important. Going off that, a lot of our customers express the need to use them for quality control forms. So they wanna make sure that um, quality of a job is done properly and you can easily have forms to manage all of that. Um, like you were speaking, customized proposals or estimates. It's really great. Um, I think one of the best things about forms is you have the ability to internally create a lot of efficiency, but also look really professional to your customers as well. So you're providing a form and that form doesn't have, you know, 
handwritten notes or handwritten information on it. Everything is really clean, typed up, looks great, gets sent via email directly to your customers. So it really creates a seamless, a seamless experience for your customers, but also creates a lot of efficiency internally. So really it can be used for any branded form. We have our customers um, have asked for forms for a lot of different things, um, kind of run the gamut. So those were the, for the most popular. We also have implemented some features that made it a little bit easier for you to use the forms as well. So um, if you're concerned about um, your technicians or who's ever performing a job not knowing what form to use on what service, we have the ability for you to really easily associate specific forms that you might use. So say you use a quality control form for a specific service. You have the ability to associate those two for that form to that, to that work order or to that job. Um, and to that service and that way your technician knows every single time they perform that job They need to use that they need to fill out that form mm -hmm. and they can do that right from the mobile application so um, We've added a lot of features and functionality to make it as efficient as possible while looking really great for your customers Excellent. Thanks Joyce. Yeah, this was uh, this was a big ask for a, a lot of our, uh, our our clients and they, they really needed something to kind of help them digitize this process um, and we just took it to the next step further to kind of make them like an ability to make them a little more professional um, and people have really been asking uh, asking about this a lot so uh, we appreciate that all right so I'm continuing on the mobile on the mobile side of things so uh, we talked about a little bit about custom forms um, mobile location verification so geo stamping so technician or crew member goes out to a job they start the job on the mobile app um, and then from there we can actually time stamp and uh, locate where they actually did start that job um, so that's it's a good way of understanding where your crews are uh, throughout the day um, and you can get everything time stamped and location stamped so you know it's it's not like they're um, they're out to lunch and they're starting the job right from you know a, a fast food restaurant or something and customers calling in asking you where are you guys and you're thinking they're there um, you can kind of uh, manage that process um, and then of course uh, a big big one is the technician messages you know we know nowadays you know everybody wants to know where are we now if you order an amazon package you want to know where it's coming from where's how many stops before it gets to me uh, it, it's just uh, the, the customer experience that everyone's used to so it's a it's a great way for your business to go ahead and let people know we're on our way. We're going to be there in a minute. You can use the canned message. You can um, send very specific messages uh, to let your customers know that, hey, we're on our way. Or we'll be there soon, some traffic, et cetera. And of course, uh, a very important part of moving cash through the business is capturing payments on the field. Uh, so, Brian, I know that uh, this is a big part. Um, of any field business, any home service business, whether you're doing commercial jobs or residential jobs. Um, what other ways are people using the geo stamping? Is it just to make sure that people are you know, starting and stopping the jobs uh, when they take them? Or is there, no, are there other reasons? There? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, it, it's from from my experience and, and speaking with a lot of people, it's it's even less about you know, there, there's always that, like, I want to know, you know, make sure, so, you know, so-and-so is is where they should be. But, you know, you got to trust your people, right? That's why you hired them. That's why we yeah. pay them and we, we have to trust them. Um, so assuming, you know, all that is that it, actually the over, the, the more feedback is almost like to throw it in the customer's face. You know what I mean? Of just kind of, you know, if you deal with a lot of commercial um, industries um, or even home home services where maybe they weren't home you can just kind of send that information if somebody calls back of you know were you here were you not here um it's just an extra layer of comfort of proof um and again just more data um the more the more clean data you have that you can you can pump through your your business um make you help you make informed decisions on the on the back side but um yeah, it's it, it's definitely a definitely a cool cool piece of technology. Yeah, and Jose, go ahead, Jose, please. I was just going to mention too, when speaking about like the mobile application and how it drives efficiency, I think one of the biggest things about the mobile app is that it really eliminates the need for double entry 
at all mm -hmm. costs. So if a technician is doing something in the field, they can enter all of the information right from the mobile application. And then it's by then, um, you know, it's already inputted into the web application. You don't need to double entry. A technician doesn't need to hand write notes and then go and enter them into a computer at the end of the day. Everything can be done real time and synced throughout all the mobile applications and all the web applications, which really does make a big difference and saves technicians a lot of time at the end of the day when they don't want to be filling out, you know, they don't want to be filling out information that they already have filled out once. Yeah, that's a great point. And then the, obviously you're going to have that dashboard up um, throughout the day too, and you can actually keep track to see, um, are my crews on time? Are they actually falling behind a little bit? So as they're clocking in and out uh, throughout the day, um, you're keeping track of all of that stuff and, and managing it, not just in the morning, but throughout the day as it progresses. So uh, uh, thank you, Joe. That's, that's good. Um, so this is just a, uh, Real quick, I just wanted to give everybody a chance to take a look at what the, the geostamping will look like within the within the system. You have all your jobs here on the left hand side, and then you would actually uh, you, know, you can go ahead and pick a job you're looking at, and you can see the actual start time um, and start stop time. So, uh, an example would be, and we hear this all the time, you know, cu customer calls into the business says, "Hey, you were never here yesterday." You know, not only do we have a start and stop time of when we were and when when we started when we stopped that job um, to, to brian's point uh, we can actually see where we were at that location um, and we can even we can deliver that information to the customer as well um, so it's, it's just a great way of just checks and balances um, you know some of these home service industries they're not home maybe you're cleaning the home maybe you're you know maybe you're doing a maintenance job where it's a lawn job you're just going there they're not even home they're out uh, they may not notice that the, the lawn was cut. They don't remember. It, it, it's all right there. You can snap a picture at the end of the job and attach it to a job, a, a work order, and send it out to the customer as well. So um, everything is in there to kind of keep everything aligned and, and to, to mitigate some of those issues. Um, this is just another example of the uh, technician messages. Brian, is there anything here where, where you think uh, any super cool creative ways you've heard people using this uh, messaging uh, feature? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the kind of obvious just, you know, some people are using it simple, just, hey, we're on our way, right? Um, but, you know, again, again, based on your uh, your business kind of workflows, um, if you have a your, your finger on the pulse of it on even more, you can have multi, multi, multi-layered ones, right, of the reasons why or what to do if not. But again, it's just, you know, it's the peace of mind of, whether whether they're home or not that they know you're going there you know within x amount of time or you're at least in route on the way there excellent thanks brian appreciate it uh, so yeah there's a little bit of configurability here that you can uh, as you can see you can kind of arrange it so that the technicians have the best uh the best way of communicating with the customer is we're running late or running i think too as of like now in these times of covid this is so important. People want to know who's coming to their house, when they're going to be there. That way they have some time to, you know, do whatever they need to do, get out of the house if they want, you know, yep. go hide or get away just so that they know, um, you know, when people are going to be in their house and in their personal space. So I think this is important regardless, but especially during the times that we're in right now, this is even more important. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, and I know we do this in our personal lives. I may be stopping by a friend's house to pick up you know, something from their house and say, hey, listen, I'm five minutes away. Maybe you want to mask up before we get there. Uh, so just the times we're living in, it's, it's more and more important to have this type of technology to, to make sure that everybody knows where we are uh, to be prepared and be safe, of course. Um, the next part, obviously, we're out there. We're doing these jobs. We want to actually track and record the jobs. Um, and this is going to help with the, the costs making sure that those costs stay in line so we have all these rate sheets uh available and hourly wages you can track lunch and time off wages and of course uh, what we mentioned for us is the run of the payroll of course you put some images here of kind of some of the configuration this is just a small little snippet of it um and i know brian uh yeah you, you know you you can just if you want mention some of the different ways people have found this you know helpful um, from a profitability standpoint um, whether it be able to kind of track the wages and make sure that we're kind of keeping those costs um, 
Yeah, for sure. I, and again, it comes back to the, the word I keep using, the automation, right? Um, you know, this is stuff where all businesses, we're all using day, to, day in, day out. We're obviously paying our, our employees a certain, a certain dollar amount per hour or per day, you know, however you break it out for, for breaks, for lunches, you could have different wages, right? Um, and, and again, it's just peace of mind that it's being tracked. It's being linked to, you know, whether it's on the website or on the mobile side, every time we're timing in and out of the job, we can know it's accurately being tracked. Um, and you can also have the peace of mind that, you know, maybe maybe right now you, you rely on your, your employees to um, kind of jot down their own hours and hand it in at the end of the week, right? Pretty pretty common pretty common workflow. And and again, you, you trust your people. You should trust your people. You hired them. They are they have you know your baby of a business in their hands. They're representing the company. You you hired good people. But you know a round up here, a round down there. You multiply that over the year again from a from a profitability. Um, standpoint like th those those little little nooks and crannies along the way um really start adding up so this just kind of gives you the peace of mind that it's there um again scalability through the roof you just set it up when you hire somebody and you're good to go um because again you're, you know your employees are your biggest investment yeah like, and, then and it's not even close kind of confusing right where you're trying to keep track of the breaks, you know, they're, they're getting breaks and they're getting lunch and, you know, uh, keeping track of a lot of that. You, know, you got five guys out in the field, you got 10 guys out in the field. That gets a little bit crazy and overwhelming, you know. Um, you know, I just know from talking to business owners, their primary focus is really just kind of making making money and driving the business, uh, driving sales. Um, this is a, an important part of the business, but when it takes a lot of time to kind of manually manage that or use some type of system um, this is a really helpful piece to make sure that it's just streamlining some of that administrative stuff that we, we need to do but it doesn't necessarily uh, contribute to kind of generating some sales and really generation so it's an important part uh, absolutely and, and and you know it's you know when you talk to a lot of people and and just being in the world you know there's certain things you got to chalk up right it's almost like just the cost of running the business right you got to you know <laughs> You don't want to be a, a, a you know a new a you know what breaker and and be on top of everybody and micromanage everybody as much as you want to you know you, you, there's that balance right so sometimes we make concessions on all right you know I know maybe the hours are off a little here or there but you know what the person shows up every single day and that in and of itself is a feat to overcome I know everybody on the on the line here can relate to that so maybe we turn a blind eye but you know what when with the technology in place you don't have to and then at the end of the day host on to your point if we're focused on you know obviously servicing our customers and then nurturing them to grow the business or get new customers to grow the business this plays right into that you know what I mean it, it's might seem little day in and day out but you know, a couple hours here or there a week across, you know, two, three, four, five people multiply that across your season. Those are those are serious dollars that you're keeping you're keeping in the business. Appreciate that. Thanks, Brian. Right, we got to move on and uh, creating commissions. Uh, this is a really cool uh, piece of the software. Um, and, you know, one of the main reasons why we want to have Joyce on this call, uh, because we know this is this is also a very difficult, difficult piece. Uh, you know, we want to pay our guys well. We want to make sure that um, our crews and our technicians are making the money that they've earned. Um, and that helps drive more sales, you know. Um, but it, it, it gets difficult to kind of keep track of all the different. I may have different percentages for different people um, and I got to pay them out at different times. So it gets, you know, and we just went through a litany of different things that you got to keep track of. It's just one other thing that we want to streamline and make it simple for you guys. So uh, we want to show you the, the commissions and how we can uh, build out a commission rule, um, how we manage, approve, and reconcile those commissions and uh, track and keep track of records. So um, we, have, we have Joyce here, uh, the product owner. So I want her to go ahead and, and give her the floor to kind of walk through how we kind of develop this. Uh, some of the things we took into consideration. Yeah, of course. 
Um, so like Hosama was saying, we made it really easy um, to pay out your employees, to create commissions, and to track those commissions. So essentially, it boils down to a few steps. I'm going to go over it really high level. Um, and I saw a question if this can be used in combination of the hourly rate or the timesheets that were just shown, and yes. So you can pay your customers or your employees hourly, and then they can also earn a commission based off of any job that they're done or however you would pay out your commission. So we've made it really flexible and really robust um, depending on how you use commissions for your employees and for your business. When talking to our customers and talking to some prospective customers as well, we realized that people use commissions in a very different range depending on what type of company you are, you know, how you pay your employees, how often. So we made something that was really robust that could be used in a lot of different use cases, a lot of different business cases. Um, at the crux of it, what you do is you create commission structures. So, and those commission structures have commission rules. Those rules say how much the commission is worth, what is it applied to? So you can you can pay your employees based off of work that they perform, so jobs or specific service offerings that you offer. You can pay a commission off of a contract sold or an agreement that was created. So the overall cost of a recurring service or um, you know for an account. You can pay a commission based off of a product that's being used or a product that was sold um, that's in association to a job that was being performed. So depending on how you use commissions, no matter what you pay them out for, we have that flexibility. And then we have some additional rules where you can say, um, you know, if there's a maximum value to a commission, if there's a minimum value that needs to be met before your employee gets a commission. Um, we also have different rules in place for if teams are working on things or if there's just one resource versus a team. So we made things as robust as possible. Um, so you create structures and apply those structures to your employees. And then once you have those structures created and they're assigned to employees, it's pretty, it's pretty great because those commissions will automatically generate as jobs are being completed, as work is being done, as agreements are being closed and contracts are being won. So those things are all automatic. And then because we're generating those commissions automatically, we want to make sure that you have the ability to go in and reconcile them if needed to be, if need be, if something was created out of error or if something was generated based off of an old rule or an old structure, you can go in and you can reconcile that. Or if you need to go in um, and reject something, so say something, an employee didn't get a commission for whatever reason, or after the fact you're deciding not to give a commission out, you can always reject those commissions or approve them and say, you know, this all looks good, this is the automatic commission that was generated and now you can go in and improve them. So we give that good flexibility where once you set up the rules, you set those up once and you assign those once, you can always go in and change them, but that's really a one-time thing and that's um, the bulk of where the work is and then everything else is just generated automatically. So it saves a lot of time, a lot less man like manual entry of seeing technician A did this job and that's 10% or and doing that manually for every single job is going to be a lot. So this creates more automated process, but still gives you flexibility and still gives you um, the ability to actually go in and make changes and reconcile after the fact. So it's very, very flexible. Yeah, I, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've been on the phone with a business owner and they just mentioned that, you know, either they pay the wrong commission amount, they pay too much, um, they wish they didn't pay it because, you know, they didn't realize that they may be leaving um, and they have a policy where they don't pay the commission if they leave. So there's just all these different little variables. And, you know, obviously paying commission, this is supplemental pay. This is addition to, in addition to in some instances where it's not just commission only. Um, so it can get rather expensive. So this is a really important part. And uh, another reason why I wanted to bring Joyce on to this webinar is that we, we have an advisory board where we sit with our business owners um, and we ask them, and we, we communicate with them and they give us the feedback um, before we go ahead and implement or design anything. They really help us come up with the most optimal finished product. Um, and, and Joyce leads that effort and we really, her setting all that up for us, um, it gives us a, a great chance to really hone in on the product mm -hmm. uh, functionality and make sure it's, it's set up perfectly. Yep, That's and I did notice a question came in about when the functionality for commissions is going to be available for you. So it's going to be available within the next month. So um, that's something that's coming very soon. We're really excited about it. We're just finishing up development, so it will be released relatively soon.
you're getting a sneak peek. This is the coming soon part. Uh, so <laughs> uh, everyone's getting a sneak peek of uh, well, what it what it could potentially look like um, and when it's going to be available. So uh, thanks again, Joyce. Really appreciate that. And I want to thank everybody for joining us.